I'm not done digging all the post holes yet, but I wanted to feel like I'm making some progress. So today, I'll be setting some posts in concrete. I've thrown in some gravel and some larger rocks to help keep the posts in place. The branches, of course, are just there to keep the posts in place while the concrete cures. Limbing tree branches around here is going to be a forever job. These were just a few of the ones that I chainsawed out. Some of them were rubbing against structures. Some of them were just in my way. Some of them were already dead. I picked these for this project because they were relatively straight, strong, thin enough for my screws to get through, and about the right length. I'm not going to pre-mix the concrete. That will happen in the holes. You may be interested in the drainage out here. We've had a few gully washers since I've dug these holes, and when it really rains hard, those holes can fill up with water. It takes about 24 hours for the water to be gone. I wouldn't call our soil fluffy loam, but that seems like a pretty good balance for water retention versus drainage. Still got some more fence post holes to dig and there are a few holes that just need to be dug deeper but I am making progress what do you guys think are you gonna be happy when you get get out of there and run around out here yeah I thought so
We're getting there. These posts have had several days to cure and they're ready for the cross braces. Each of those holes took a little more than two bags of that concrete mix. The last few inches I top dressed and smoothed over to follow the contour of the ground. I'll be using cross braces to attach the cross supports. You'll see how the long and short ones work together. The two by four scraps are just clamped on there to help me level, measure, and position the cross brace. I'm going to use this 2x4 to try and keep my drill hole parallel with where the post needs to go. I'm going to leave this pin out just a little bit to help with the high tension diagonal wire that I need to put on here. Fence staples are also going to help with the wire being able to slide easily across this pole without digging too much into it.
the wire, of course, always has to go from high on the brace post to low on the end post. And of course, I put another group of staples down there so the wire won't dig into this post either. Wrapping the wire is probably the most awkward thing to do with just one person, so I didn't film that part. But I went around a couple of times and I made a figure eight in the middle, so hopefully that'll hold the wire in from the outside of the fence just in case we want to put electric wire out here. We don't want that to be bulging out and grounding the, the electric fence. I'm just using an inline strainer to tighten this thing. The nice thing about these inline strainers is you can always come back with your handle and tighten it up a little bit if it gets a little loose. All right, I've got one unanticipated problem. The width of these posts are touching each other, which is preventing this from going nice and flush to the post. So I'm going to have to chainsaw just a, just a little bit out of here so it, it can slip on. This is what the corner is supposed to look like. One thing I forgot to mention, the inline strainer I put on the outside of the fence. That way when I need to tighten it, I can do that from the outside of the fence without getting in there and having to deal with rowdy goats. No spoilers here, but it has been several days since that last clip. I wanted to mention at the end of this video about setting posts that you need to do those cross support systems in the corners. Yes, you're a good goat. At the end of a fence line and, and on either side of where our gate's going to be. It is fun to finally see the fence taking shape. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.